Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture 12 of SBR. And today's topic is IS21 the effects of changes in foreign exchange rates. In this question, uh, sorry, in this uh, standard, be prepared for lots of numerical questions. Okay, and this is one of the easiest standard. So make sure that try to get the maximum marks in the standard itself if you if you are given this standard in your exam another reason why this standard is very important is because in your sbr exam you know that question number 1 for 30 marks is group question, group accounting right so in your group accounting is21 also could be a part of it they might give you uh, subsidiaries in foreign currency and all which you might have to translate so for that you have to know all the rules and regulations Starting with IS21, these are the things which we are going to focus on this lecture. Functional and presentation currency. You have to know how to determine functional currency. Okay, there are some factors which we are going to go through and which you need to memorize. Accounting for transactions designated in foreign currency. Okay. Criticisms of IS21 translating the subsidies financial statements the fourth one is the most common scenario that you might be given in your exam sbr exam where you might be given a subsidies financial statements because the group accounting questions right you might have to translate to the parents uh, com parent company's uh, currency and disposal of overseas subsidies IS21 deals with these three things. Number one, functional and presentation currency. Number two, accounting for individual transactions in a foreign currency and translating the financial statements of a foreign operation. The last one is to do with the group accounting. That is the area which we are focusing on. The first one, functional and presentation currency is the theory part. Basically, you just have to memorize it and apply it to your case study given to you. Okay. So let's start with functional currency what is functional currency it is the currency of the primary economic environment where the entity operates okay now is21 says you have to consider some primary factor before deciding what is the functional currency in your exam they might give you two three currencies they will give you some information also you have to see out of those two three currencies what is the functional currency and you have to be very sure of this you have to pick the right one otherwise everything else goes wrong because this is the first step in your is21 identifying the correct functional currency because everything depends on that functional currency afterwards all your calculations are only be able to do so you cannot go wrong here okay number one primary factor c in which currency the sale prices are which currency influences the sale price for goods and services see the which currency this you will get to know from your case study given to you they will tell you that 70 percent of the sales are in dollar or 30 percent of the sales are in pounds they will give you like that something like that second factor check the currency of the country whose competitive forces and regulations determine the sale price of goods and services they will clearly tell you these things in the exam in the case study itself, they will tell you. Third, currency that mainly influences your labor, material, and other cost. Check in which currency are your labor cost, material cost, other cost. These three are the primary factor. You have to check for this. Now, if those from those three factors you cannot come to a conclusion, you cannot decide that this is a functional currency because it's nearly uh, maybe let's say they say 50% is this 50% is 50 50 right you are not sure this currency or that currency then you have to go look for secondary factor you have to consider secondary factor also see if you have already decided based on your primary factor that this one is your functional currency you don't have to look for the secondary factor secondary factor comes into the picture only when you cannot decide from the primary factor then you look for the secondary factor also there are two secondary factors that you need to look for to decide functional currency. Number one, check the currency in which funds from financing activities are generated. They will clearly tell you 
that let's say uh, funds are generated in dollar or funds are generated in uh, Japanese yen or anything like that. Second, currency in which receipt from operating activities are retained. In which currency are you retaining the receipt from operating activity? So you have to see this too. Okay. And mind you, if you are not able to get it from the primary factor through the secondary factor, you will be able to get it. There is no doubt about it. Okay. Examiner is not examiner will not make it very tough by uh, giving you something which is very difficult to determine using both primary and secondary it never happens you will get it in the secondary factor okay you have to be you have to get you cannot say you cannot determine the functional currency at all no it never happens you have to determine one and you will you will be able to do it okay now coming to foreign subsidiary See, there are times, okay, when the foreign subsidiary, when they see the functional currency, okay, they, they pick the functional currency, they do not look for all the factors that we just went through. They, they ignore it. They just decide to go by the same functional currency as its parent. They don't see for this primary factor, secondary factor and all. Okay, so in determining this, IS21 says, following factors should be considered if they go by the parent. These are the following four factors if they choose to pick the same functional currency as its parent. Number one, whether the foreign operation operates as an extension of the parent rather than having significant autonomy. Autonomy means freedom, independence. They have their own decision. So where it is an extension of the parent, then you have to use the same functional currency as the parent. Second, the level of transactions with the parent. If the level of the transactions with the parents are frequent, are in large volumes, same functional currency. Third, whether cash flows are readily available for remittance to its parent. If it is yes, same functional currency. And the last question, whether the foreign operation has sufficient cash flows to service its debt without needing funds from its parent. If it needs fund from its parent, same functional currency as its parent. So if the answer to all those four questions are yes, 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 then it's the same functional currency as a spirit. If it's a no, if it's a no, then you need to go by the primary and the secondary factor, which we have discussed previously. Okay, so this is, this, this is a very simple task. Okay, it will not take you, Sorry, it will not take you so many minutes to figure this out. Okay. Because there are no calculation questions. You only have to write. It's purely based on your knowledge. Okay. Knowledge based question. Now we are moving on to presentation currency. Presentation currency means the currency in which you present your financial statement. Okay. This can be different from your functional currency. Please understand this. Sometimes it's same. Sometimes it's different. And if it's different you need to bring it to your functional currency. You have to convert it to your functional currency because you have to show your financial statements in the functional currency. It cannot be in two different currencies. It will be, but you have to convert it, translate it. Okay, so that's it. Uh, now we'll be doing a question on this functional and presentation currency. How to determine the functional currency in, uh, through a question before we move on to the accounting part of it. Test your understanding one. Okay, Jive. So for him, what is the functional currency? You need to read. Okay, the case study. So let's read it. Jive is an entity located in a country whose currency is in dollar. All of its equity shares are owned by an entity whose functional currency is the euro. Okay, Jive has very few transactions with its parent and adds with significant autonomy see this are the keywords these are very important what is the level of the transaction with the parent whether they have significant autonomy or not second paragraph 70 percent of their sales are denominated in dollar and 30 percent are denominated in sterling it looks like dollar is the functional currency looking at the percentage of sales right but 
we have to look for the other factors also all the factors has to play a picture there okay chive does not convert receipt from customers into other currencies does not convert the receipt from customers into other currencies and they buy most of its inventories and pay for a large a proportion of operating cost in sterling you see the cost is in sterling even though looking at sales you might say it's dollar but cost are in sterling so it's a confusing situation right let's read more they have two bank loans outstanding it has no intra group loans both of its loans are denominated in dollar now how do you write this answer you first need to decide how many points you have to write how will you structure this answer in paragraphs what are you going to start then what will be your second point then how will you proceed to third point then how will you end it you need to have this structure you visualize it before you actually write it see you first because they are talking about parent right parent subsidiary whenever they talk about parent subsidiary you first point needs to be the factor the four factors which we discussed about the parent and the foreign subsidiary not the primary and the secondary first you go through those four and see whether the subsidiary can choose the same functional currency as the parent or not if the answer is no then you go back and start with the primary factor first if still you cannot decide go to the secondary factor the last resort and from there you will be able to decide this is the method okay so first i'll write it here this is not the answer but this is the way you need to answer a question like this first check the pain and subsidies relation how strong it is second you need to go as primary factor so first paragraph you are writing, talking about parent subsidiary second paragraph is about the primary factor third is about the secondary factor if you cannot decide from the primary and fourth is your actual answer the functional currency what is your functional currency so you can answer this question in four para four different paragraphs i'm not writing the answer for you it's already there you can go and see it from your textbook okay if you don't have the textbook by the way for the students who do not have the textbook the soft copy the kaplan from september 2022 to june 2023 i have the latest book with me you can email me okay and get the textbook and the revision kit as well only the kaplan is there with me i don't have the bpp version okay so now let's start one by one the first paragraph is okay about this i will take the branch up. see chive is a subsidiary okay but it operates with autonomy it has significant autonomy number 1 it has significant autonomy that means doesn't look like it has to adopt the same functional currency as the parent right because significant autonomy is there second it does not rely on intra group financing somewhere they told no intra group loans you see that means loan means financing only no intra group financing parent you do not require the parent to finance you so again they are not dependent on the parent the second point also confirms that okay no intra group finance the third all this you are writing in the first paragraph write in full sentences i am just giving you the points third so now out of this two point from this two point you can understand to the conclusion that functional currency should be determined separately for this child it cannot be the parents functional currency no not parents functional currency for child okay you need to determine it separately now we are coming to the second paragraph primary factor so what are the primary factor sales again i will divide it like this sales okay so they told sales 70% are in dollar 
looks like dollar is the functional currency right looks like because of 70 percent but coming to the cost it's the pound it's the pound you have to take each into the consideration see just by looking at the dollar because they told 70 percent is a uh, sales are in dollar don't come to the conclusion that dollar is the functional currency you cannot be too big all the primary factor has to be present there if it was the cost also in dollar the sales are also in dollar then you can say dollar is the functional currency then you do not need to go to the secondary factor the reason we have to go to the secondary factor is because it is giving a confusing picture through sales we are getting dollar through cost we are getting pounds we cannot decide so come to the secondary factor okay see if you go by the cost as the pounds okay now primary factor not clear come to the secondary factor secondary factor also there are two things what are they receipts if you see receipts they are both in dollar and pounds again a difficult situation right we'll go up and show you where are the receipts they do not convert the receipt from customers into other currencies that means whatever the receipt they get it is in that currency only if it's in dollar it's in dollar if it's in pounds it's pounds they do not convert it so through this also you cannot decide now the last is what funding funding check the funding funding there are two uh, there are two low bank loans okay both of its loans are denominated in dollar so this last point tells dollar is the functional currency you see funding uh, is in dollar so majority points are in dollar this is dollar this is dollar this is dollar you see two uh, the funding is in are in dollar so it has more dollar factor than the pound factor so you can come to a conclusion that dollar is your functional currency now write it in the fourth okay that dollar is the functional currency so therefore any transaction that is in euro or sterling needs to be translated into dollar okay that's what you need to write now we are moving on to the accounting section of is21 accounting for transactions in foreign currency okay this is for simple transactions i'm talking we are still in the single uh, single company we still didn't move on to the group companies but you need to understand the concept of the single company how we translate using the different rates because the same technique we'll be using in the group group accounting with some additions to that so when an entity enters into a transaction that is in a different currency than your functional currency the transaction first needs to be translated translated into the functional currency before you can record it you first need to translate and then you need to record it so the exchange rate that you use to initially record the transactions should either be this two number one the spot exchange rate on that date of the transaction or an average rate in the exam you have to see which rate is given to you and accordingly you have to pick is it the spot exchange rate or average rate if one of them is given you can use any of it so moving on to the cash settlement when a cash settlement occurs that means you are receiving cash from the overseas credit customer okay the settled amount should be translated into the functional currency using the spot exchange rate on that date on the settlement date okay and if this amount is different from the amount used amount that used when the transaction occurred then there will be an exchange difference see the exchange rate when you entered into the transaction was different and when the settlement happened let's after two months or three months exchange rate changed either it went up in your or down it went in your favor or against you because of that there will be an exchange difference so that exchange difference you account it as a gain or a loss you will get an exchange gain or a loss when you translate the transaction to functional currency okay this 
exchange gain or loss is recognized in profit and loss. Now we are going to do a very small question on this exchange differences on settlement before we move on to our next topic. Accounting for transactions in foreign currency. Now we are going to go to the treatment of year end balances. For year end balances, there are two things that you need to take care of. One is whether it's a monetary or a non monetary item. If it's a monetary items, for example, like cash, receivable, payable, or loan, you retranslate using the closing rate. And if it's a non monetary item like your inventory is non current assets investment you do not retranslate but if there has been a revaluation of the non current assets okay then you, that fair value should be translated on the date it was determined now let us do a small question on both monetary and a non monetary item to understand this better monetary items question we have already done while we were doing the receivable now we are moving on to non-monetary items and non-monetary items at fair value so in this question olympic okay he is uh, functional and presentation currency is dollar okay and he is using the cost model in is 16 he purchased a land on 1st of july 2005 that time the rate was uh, four okay he bought it for 1.2 million dinar so your answer is from here okay this is the solution see initially it will be at cost okay the land will be initially recognized at cost understand land is a non-monetary item okay so that means when you translate it it will be 1.2 divided by 4 because you bought at this what about the closing date because it's a non monetary item, you do not retranslate. You don't retranslate land. You keep it as 300,000 only. So, in the year end also, it will be 300,000. There will be no depreciation that will be charged. Okay. In accordance with IS 16, no depreciation is charged. So, land will remain at 300,000 only. Coming to non, -monet non monetary items at fair value, another example here, Palod functional and presentation currency is dollar okay he is accounting for land using the revaluation model in is 16 he purchased a land for 1.2 on this date and sorry on this date he purchased and on this date the fair value was 1.5 million so now is the same thing initially it will be at cost the land it will be translated using 4. So 1.2 divided by 4, same as 300,000. But when you come to the subsequent remeasurement, there will be no, they will not be retranslated, the land. But what about the fair value? Fair value, yes, you have to. So the fair value at that date was 1.5 and it was on this date, the rate was 3. So this 1.5, you have to divide by 3. Okay, here. So this 1.5 is divided by 3 and you are getting 500,000. You see, earlier it was 300, now it increased to 500. So there is an increase in the carrying value of the land of 200,000 due to fair value. Even the fair value needs to be changed because it is in dinar. Okay, that's why we converted it using 3. This will go to other comprehensive income. This gain in your under evaluation gain. Right? So that's it. This is how you account for it. Now we are moving on towards the criticisms of IS21. Okay. In your SBR exam, this question might not come as a, a question, a standalone question. For example, they might not say state criticisms of IS21. But the reason that uh, why we are studying it here is just know the criticism you don't have to memorize anything or anything like that but just knowing the criticisms okay of is21 will help you in your question number four if they say uh, you to compare it with the conceptual framework right 
if they tell you whether IS-21 is consistent with conceptual framework in the recognition and measurement of exchange gain or losses, anything like that. That time, these criticisms of IS-21 will help you. That's the reason why we are going through this. Otherwise, it's not so important from the point of your SVR exam. Okay, but let's go. There are five criticisms of IS-21. Number one, lack of theoretical underpinning. What does it mean? See, it says exchange foreign exchange gain and losses on monetary items go to PNL, but it's not clear why they go there. Because if it's on a consolidation, the foreign exchange gain and losses goes in OCI. So it's not clear why foreign exchange gain and losses on monetary items go to PNL, foreign exchange gain and losses on consolidation go to OCI, two separate places. But the rule says so. We still haven't moved to the foreign exchange gain and losses on consolidation, but we'll be shortly going there, right? After this, and we'll be doing two more questions before we go to consolidation. Second is, they say that the reporting exchange gain and losses in profit and loss increases the volatility of the profit. So they are saying it's better to write it, the gain and losses in OCI if there is a high chance of reversal. Second, long-term items. For long-term items, they say using the closing rate. So if you're using the closing rate for retranslating long-term monetary items, see monetary items, you can retranslate. Okay, long-term monetary items, if you're retranslating using closing rate, it's it does not reflect the economic substance, no? Because current exchange rate is being used to translate the amount that will be repaid in the future. It will be something that will be, let's say, long-term loan. It will be something that will be varied in five years, but you are using the closing date of today. So it's not so appropriate, right? But we are using because that is the downs, downfall of IS-21. Second, foreign exchange gain and losses on long-term loan, sorry, long-term items are highly likely to reverse before repayment or receipt. That means gain and losses are unrealized. So if it's unrealized, again, it, it makes a point. It's better to write it in OCI rather than profit and loss. You understanding? Third, average rate. See, if you're using average rate, okay, IS-21 does not say how that average rate is, how do you determine the average rate? So because of this, you can easily manipulate your net assets and total comprehensive income because you can just determine the average rate the way you want and show it's show that as an average rate. Second is use of different average rate will reduce the comparability between different reporting entities, which is again not a good thing. Okay. Fourth, monetary and non-monetary. This classification is not very clear cut. Okay. It's hard to make a distinction between this two sometimes. Fifth and the last criticism is foreign operation. It says, IS-21 has a very, very restrictive definition when it comes to foreign operation. Foreign operation means subsidiary, associate, joint venture, or a branch where the activities are in a different country or the currency is different from your currency, the parent company's currency. But IS-21 is saying that it is better to use definition of a foreign operation that is based on substance rather than its legal form. So these are some criticisms now we'll be moving on to test your understanding two and test your understanding three before we move on to the consolidation part. Test your understanding two, butler, waiter, and attendant. Okay. So an entity has a reporting date for butler, 31st December. Functional currency is dollar. Okay. On 27th November, they buy goods from a Swedish supplier for this much okay buys goods on 19 december pick pays this with a supply in full exchange rate has been given describe how they were transaction should be accounted for okay b is for waiter and c is for attendant so we'll do one by one first we'll finish off with a then b then c okay so let us do that Starting with A. Always keep in mind whenever you are translating, 
whether it's a monetary or a non monetary item okay so this is about a payable because you have purchased on credit and the settlement is done after a few days so on the transaction date okay there are two dates one when you have entered into transaction two when settlement was done okay so on 27th november 2006 this is for a for butler 27 november okay what was done you need to debit purchase because you have purchased and you need to credit your payable because you are buying on credit on this date okay but the transaction will be at how much it is in swedish so 324000 and the rate at that date was 11.15 is equals to $1 so you need to divide because this is also in swk this is also in swk same currency i earlier told you divide so 324000 divide by 11.15 take out a calculator and check on your own you have to get this in dollar okay 29058 same 29058 now when the cash settlement is done on 19th december this is the date when cash settlement has been done okay so you need to debit your payables because you will not have any credit or left or maybe you have paid partially it depends how much you have paid you need to debit your profit or loss oh, you still don't know whether it's a gain or a loss so we'll keep it and you need to credit your cash because you are paying in cash okay so for payable it is this thing exactly the same thing your closing of that account but when it comes to cash how much cash did you pay okay it is the rate at that day was 10.93 okay so it will be 324000 divided by 10.93 which will be 29 Six four three. So you see, you are payable. Okay, you are paying your payable twenty nine zero five eight. You are paying more more in cash. So it's a loss. So you need to debit that in PNL. It's an exchange loss of the difference. Just find the difference between these two, which will give you five eighty five. This is an exchange loss. Understanding. So this five eighty five will go in PNL as an exchange loss. Now we are moving on to B. So with the idea of A, now you can do B and C very quickly. B is for waiter. Maybe the situation changed. Let's see. Here is the same. Functional currency is dollar. They have taken a loan here of this much. and repayment was done of this much now the repayment is different is a partial repayment not the full this one and the rates are given three rates are given first of jan this is the date when you have taken the loan repayment was done on first of march okay but the question is on 31st december what would be the how it should be accounted for the previous question asked for 31st december 2006 okay so there were two dates given and on this date you have done the payment but here the question is little different compared to a there are three dates on this date you went to the loan this date you paid this is the year end that means you have to retranslate retranslation because it's a monetary item loan that means right loan is a monetary item so let us do the first one you just have to divide okay 120000 you have taken a loan so on 1st of jan you have taken a loan so you debit cash because you are receiving cash and you credit the loan 
how much 120 uh, okay here we get pay attention to this you don't divide check the currency this is k and here it is the other way around k is priced as equal to dollar two you had you have to convert it into dollar you understanding so here check your base currency base currency means whichever is termed as one this is your base currency and this is your counter currency okay and here it is k120 so you have to multiply this time because you are changing it into dollar earlier you were able to divide because it was priced as that currency now it is price now it is the other way around if it was like this dollar one is equals to k2 then you can just divide it by two because this is also in k this is also in k earlier it was dollar one dollar was priced this time it is k that is priced so you need to convert it into dollar this is in k okay so you need to multiply this time i'm i'm not sure whether you're able to understand it or not okay if you're not able to understand let me put it in another way k1 dollar 2 okay put the same currency this is k120000 okay so now question mark you want to convert it into dollar so you just cross multiply you see 1k is equal to 2 dollar 1k means double the dollar so 120000k will be the double of it in terms of dollar you understanding so 120000 into 2 240000 so it will be 240000 and 240000 now you need to go to 1st of march 2007 when the payment was done of 40,000 I guess right 40,000 K but that time exchange rate was 3 so 40,000 into 3 okay it will be K 40,000 into 3 which will be in dollar 120,000 so here you are making cash settlement that means you are debiting your loan and you are crediting your cash So it will be 120 and 120. Okay. Now comes what? What is next? For 31st December, right? So for 31st December, the rate is 3.5. Okay. Understand loan is a monetary item, so you need to retranslate it. Retranslate what the remaining loan you had a loan of 120k, you paid 40,000 in K. Don't check the translated amount, I'm talking in terms of K first before translating. A remaining loan will be retranslated. 120 you took a loan 40,000 you made the repayment balance 80,000 needs to be retranslated okay so here 80,000 is the balance this loan needs to be re uh, retranslated okay so when you translate it it will be into 3.5 to take it in terms of dollar which will be 20,000. This is the closing liability. Now find the exchange gain or loss on retranslation. This is not retranslation here. We have just converted it into dollar. Okay. To do that, to do that, you can use a table. How? You need to use a table when three dates are there. 1st of Jan, 1st of March, and 31st december you can do this in excel better to do it in excel i will advise you to do it in excel this is in k 
this is the rate and this is in dollar okay so here you had 120000 you took a loan 40000 you made the repayment so you are left with 40000 correct this time the rate was 2 this time the rate was 3 so you multiplied and 240 120 so when you see you deducted it you got 160000 right sorry i'm sorry you got uh, 120 if you see the difference but on this date it was 80000 the rate was 3.5 and you are getting 280 so you see this is not matching with this your rent is 280 but after you have converted this to and then you got the difference is 120 so that difference is known as exchange difference it's an exchange loss of what 280 minus 120 which is 160 this is how you record it understanding why this is an exchange loss please understand this the closing is more it's 280 it's more than what you have got through when you have converted this and got the difference but when you go through this rate it's actually more this is a liability if it's more at the year end it's not good it's an exchange loss for you so double entry would be it's a loss so you debit pnl and you credit loan how much 160 now we are coming to c c is a different type of nature the asset is different it is functional currency is dollar all these things are same okay it's about land it's about land it's a non-monetary asset understand this purchased it on this date so we are using this rate okay it purchased it for r 60 here it's r here also it's r it is terms, uh, priced in terms of dollar so here you have to divide again okay I was, I was just showing you that thing for multiplication and division you need to divide 60,000 by 8 value of the land at the reporting date that is 31st December was 80,000 this is the exchange rate using cost and the fair value account it okay so first we'll go by the cost okay see asset initially it is at cost land at cost initially if you go by the cost model and you do not even retranslate it also if you go by the cost model year end you do not retranslate what is the cost it is 60,000 divided by 8 which is 7,500 this is the cost of the land you have to write land is a non-monetary therefore okay I'll write it land is non-monetary therefore don't retranslate you do not retranslate it at the year end only monetary items like data loans and all in the previous we had to retranslate it because it was a monetary item here land is a non-monetary item you do not retranslate it okay so you keep it as 7500 only now if you're going by the fair value first step okay is the same initially it will be 7500 only only the fair value you have to what translate so what was the fair value it was 60 to 80000 okay so only that 80000 now you have to take it at 10 so here 80000 
if we divide it by 10 it is 8000 okay this is for the fair value now you see the carrying value of the land increased from 7500 to 8000 so the increase is 500 where will this 500 go for that you have to know how your land is treated if your land please understand this many of you might not think about this if land is under because they didn't tell you the reason how the land is utilized if your land is under is 40 if your land is used as an investment property this gain of 500 will be recorded in pnl if it comes under is 16 this gain of 500 will go to other comprehensive income understanding and one more thing i want to show you here is see earlier we did only the only the fair value the increment here most of you might have thought it's 80 minus 60000 so 20000 you take as 10 and then 20000 divided by 10 which is 2000 okay no they told the purchase cost of the land at this one was this one the value of the land at the reporting date was this one already they have increased it by 20000 the fair value that means it was being revalued upwards by 20000 and at the reporting date this is the value so this is what you have to retranslate not the difference 20,000. Some of you might take the increment amount from 60 to 80 and 20,000 you divide it by 10. And hence you are getting 2,000. But see, it cannot be because if you are taking 2,000, then it will be less than the 7,500. It has to be more than this, right? How are you going to get the gain otherwise? So that's it for test understanding two. With this understanding, we are moving on to test understanding three. The last question before we go to group accounting questions where we have to translate the foreign subsidiaries. So here A, B, just A and B, two questions are there. Okay. So here highlight for him the currency is dollar. Okay. Purchased plant and equipment on this on this date. Then on this date, made a payment of this much. He had a policy of applying historical cost accounting and depreciation is 20% straight line. No useful life, sorry, no uh, residual values there. All the three dates are given. You just have to now translate. Okay. So I think this should be so difficult for you you can take your time and do this okay so immediately we can use a table for this i think that would be better how are you going to solve this as better to use a table we'll come to part b later first we'll finish part a test understanding three part a okay so it is in this dinner raid and dollar okay first of july payables how much was the payable it was four hundred thousand. at that rate that day the rate was 10. you divide or you multiply with Everything is priced as dollar one. That means you divide. So it is forty thousand. Next part payment. You are not paying fully on first of November, but you are paying part payment. Okay, payment. How much? One eighty. One eighty. The balance of the invoice remains outstanding. This on this date, the rate was 7.2. 
So if you divide by 7.2, you are going to get 25,000. Maybe in decimal, but better to round it up to whole number. Your Excel will help you to do that. Exchange gain or loss, we don't know. We'll keep a space, keep a space in between. And then for 31st December, we are going to write the payable outstanding. So if you minus 400 from 180 from 400, it will be 220,000. 220,000. Okay. And on, and on that date, the rate is 8. So you divide it by 8, you are going to get 27,500. But if you go by this, if you go uh, vertically, Okay, you are going to get a different figure from 27,500. Just wait a minute, just give me 220. Yes, so if you do like this, you are going to get some 15,000. So here it's 15,000. Here pay outstanding is more. It's an exchange loss. Balancing figure. This always you will get like a balancing figure only exchange loss. Which is 27,500 minus 15,000 which is 12,500. You understand it? So now because plant and equipment is a non-monetary you will not retranslate. Okay, what would be the depreciation charge? For the year end, you will not depreciate, but before that, depreciation will come before the translation period. Okay, so depreciation will be what is the amount of the dollar when you got it's 40,000, right? 40,000. And they have given you the percentage 20 percent okay so apply 20 percent on this 40,000 for how many months you are keeping it you cannot depreciate it entirely See, check the date you are getting it on 1st of july you are keeping it till 31st december it is six months july august september october november december for six months so you are taking for six months and the depreciation will be four thousand okay this is the depreciation so in your statement on profit or loss how are you going to write it If you are taking the extract under your cost of sales you are going to write depreciation of 4000 and then under operating expenses you don't have to label it you can write it as an expense also normally exchange loss okay operating expense you are going to write your exchange loss of 12500 now statement of financial position two things will go property plan and equipment and your current liabilities for property plan and equipment you bought it for 40000 you have to deduct your deposition of 4000 See your payment and all doesn't matter. You bought the equipment for forty thousand. It will be for forty thousand only in dollar. Okay, thirty six thousand. And then your current liability will be this from this table twenty seven thousand five hundred. So like this, you have to do your part B also. Here you have entered into transactions on first of November. 
he made credit sales this time it's a credit sale for three months and this is the amount and on 1st of december he made further cre credit sales of this much two times he made sales on two different dates one is 1st of november one is 1st of december and by 31st december he received no payment or as the receivers were still within their credit period they were not regarded as being impaired okay and you have been given the exchange rates so now do this okay first of november and first of december two, there are two separate sales one is of 360 the other one is 540 so 360 and 540 the rates are different on the two dates okay on 1st of november it is 7.2 1st of december it is 9 so you are going to divide 7.2 and divide by 9 always put the sign in your excel or wherever you are putting it in your exam currency is very important if you are not putting the correct currency you are going to lose marks even if your number is correct don't just put number don't put 50000 put dollar 50000 Otherwise, you will get confused in which currency you are dealing. Okay, 60,000. Now, to find for the reporting year end, you can always use this table in Excel. Okay, first start with the currency given to you. Then in the second column, put the rate. Third column, put the dollar. Okay, and this is for putting dates and all. Start in the correct, uh, like from the date given. Okay. So here it will be receivable. Even if it's not clear, it's fine. You understood the meaning, right? Even on 1st of December, there is another receivable. Then I'm going to keep some space because I don't know for the exchange gain or loss. And on 31st December, receivable outstanding. Okay, this was 360,000. This one was 540,000. And if you add both the receivable, it will be 900,000. This, the date was 7.2. This, the rate was 9. And if you convert, you are getting 50 and 60,000. If, if you add up the two, it will be 110. Just keep it somewhere to know the difference. Okay. And on 31st December, the rate was 8. So you divide it by 8 and you are going to get 112,500. This is a receivable. Okay. So you see you are having 110,000. But year end, it increased to 112,500. So you, it's an exchange gain for you. Because this is receivable, you are going to receive more now. At the year end, you are going to receive more than what you have got. So that's why an exchange gain. The difference between these two is two thousand five hundred. Okay. Now it's the same like the previous. In your statement of profit and loss, what will go and your statement of financial position here. You need to recognize the revenue. This is only the extracts. And exchange gain which you can write under any heading mostly under other operating income so revenue would be 50 thousand plus 60 thousand this is the dollar amount okay 110 don't put it in dn currency exchange gain is 2500 and then statement of financial position only the receivables will go how much? This 112,500. If you add up this two, it will add up, it will be equal to this one. You see? The same way for this also. In my previous question, also, wait. Yes. If you take this, the difference, and this minus receivable from here, you will get the same. It has to because it has to balance. 
okay so that's it for this now we'll be moving on to the more uh, critical aspect of this lecture that is the consolidation part when you're going for the group accounting we are shifting from the individual uh, financial statement translation to the group financial statements translation most of the rules that you have studied till now is the same with some few exceptions and some new additions why i did extracts is because the requirement told prepare relevant extracts whenever they tell prepare relevant extracts you have to show extract it is not the full financial statement only the part of it when they don't say prepare relevant extracts you don't have to prepare the relevant extracts okay just the calculation is enough so let's move on to the consolidation part translating subsidiaries financial statements here the functional currency that is used by the subsidiary to prepare their own individual records might differ from the presentation currency of the group okay so in that condition what you need to do is you first need to convert it into the functional currency the subsidiary's currency needs to be converted to the functional currency of the group subsidiary's currency could be anything okay but you need to convert it into the functional currency of the parent of the group before you add your assets liabilities income expense of both the parent and the subsidiary first you need to convert it the financial statements of an overseas subsidiary must be translated we have lots of questions which we'll be doing on this okay now there are rules for translating an overseas subsidiary into the present presentation currency of the group number one if it's income expense and other comprehensive income they are translated by uh, they are translated by the average rate or the date of each transaction okay that means all the items in the pnl account are translated at average rate this is the rule second for assets and liabilities items that go in the statement of financial position you will translate them using closing rate first you translate in the consolidation process first you translate the subsidiaries income expense assets liability and then you add it with the parents assets liabilities income and expense when you are making the group financial statements first is the translation now one thing is when it's a consolidation okay in a group accounting you will be having a goodwill right when you acquire a subsidiary there's a goodwill so you need to translate that goodwill as well how do you translate there are rules this rule is little different compared to other asset see goodwill is a part of an asset okay but the way you deal with other assets and goodwill is different goodwill should be calculated first in the functional currency of the subsidiary then according to is 21 you have to treat it like other assets that means you have to translate at the closing rate why because goodwill is an asset asset you translate at the closing rate there are some exchange differences that you will incur when you translate so this gain and losses arise for the following reasons number one goodwill how goodwill see goodwill you need to retranslate at the year end every year you will be retranslating it at the closing rate okay it will therefore increase or decrease in value simply because of exchange rate movement so every year exchange rates are different so goodwill will keep going up and down you see so when you convert it you will be having some exchange gain and losses due to goodwill next is opening net asset if you're not able to understand all this it's okay we have lots of questions till you get this concept clear in your head okay opening net asset through this also you'll be having exchange difference at the end of the prior year net asset was translated using the closing rate of that year this year you'll be using the closing rate of this year the two rates are different therefore you'll be having some differences that difference is known as exchange rate differences third is your profit 
profit you translate at the exchange uh, average rate why because it is made up of your income and expenses income and expenses you translate at average rate okay but you also need to know that profit increases your net asset so, sorry profit increases subsidiaries assets and this is translated at the closing rate so in your pnl it is translated at average rate in balance sheet it is translated at a closing rate the two different ways therefore it will have an exchange gain or loss if you are not able to understand this at the moment don't worry keep going i have lots of questions for you okay what you need to know is where does this gain and losses goes the exchange gain or losses goes to other components of income okay whether it is from profit whether it is from net asset whether it is from the goodwill all will go in oci or the comprehensive income okay now we are coming to the goodwill translation okay this is the pro forma you need to know this pro forma you need to memorize this pro forma and you can expect a question on this in your exam very high chance of coming because group accounting is a question that is no doubt you are going to get in your sbr in question number 1 as 30 marks but whether are we going to get uh, a foreign subsidiary where we have to translate using is21 or not is a separate story we don't know but it has a very high but at least you know group accounting will come so be prepared for this also the translation part three things only you need to worry about goodwill net asset profit goodwill net asset profit the rest everything is very easy all assets closing rate all liabilities closing rate all income average rate all expense average rate okay so goodwill this is the pro forma memorize it do lots of questions using this pro forma only because we are using this only throughout our questions dn is one currency okay and we have dollar so you start with opening goodwill opening goodwill you use opening rate goodwill can get impaired right it can lose its value impairment loss and all impairment loss is an expense and expense will be translated using what average rate because opening goodwill is at opening rate impairment is at average rate the two rates are different and closing goodwill is using closing rate that's why you will be having small difference that difference is known as exchange gain or loss this is the same for net asset this is the same for profit it's always a balancing figure so you start with opening deduct goodwill get your closing balance is exchange gain or loss okay sometimes you might not have the impairment sometimes okay so you have to see for it you have to look for it but the impairment might not be there all the time sometimes the impairment might not be there also still you will have a difference why because opening goodwill is at opening rate closing goodwill is at closing rate the two rates are different if the two rates were not different you would not have that exchange gain or loss but it will be you will be having some exchange gain or loss that's the whole purpose of is21 this exchange gain or loss will go to oci other comprehensive income coming to goodwill translation what if the subsidiary was purchased during the year then then you have to see at what date you bought the subsidiary at that date you have to take that date's uh, rate for the goodwill opening goodwill will be goodwill at acquisition you have to use that date's exchange rate not the opening uh, rate so here you have to pay attention to two things which method of goodwill are you using is it a full goodwill method or it is is it a proportionate goodwill method if it's a full goodwill method the gain and the losses you need to apportion that means divide between group and the nci non controlling interest if it's the proportionate all the exchange gain or loss goes to the parent that means it is attributable to the group you don't have to divide between nci and parent again i repeat if full full goodwill is used you have to apportion between the parent and the nci if it is proportionate entire thing goes to the group no need to proportion divide check which goodwill okay this is regarding exchange gain or loss that you need to divide 
coming to the opening net asset and profit they are treated together because they have similar nature you can treat them together okay here is the same exchange gain and losses for this two are taken together you calculate them together here also it has a pro forma this is the pro forma this is same like goodwill where opening net asset is at opening rate profit i told you is average and closing is at closing rate so it's the same thing i don't have to explain anything new here okay if it's a profit you add with the opening net asset if it's a loss you deduct from the opening net asset now opening net asset and profit same if the subsidiary was purchased in between the year then you have to use see the date at which you have purchased it that date's rate you have to take as the opening date right and same okay the gain or the loss on this translation of opening net assets and profit you have to apportion between the group and the nci based on their respective holdings let's say you have purchased 70% of the shares so 70% is to the group 30% is nci so that exchange gain and losses also you have to take 70% to the payer and 30% to the nci now exchange differences on the statement of financial position okay here we have a separate reserve for it where we are holding exchange gain on losses known as translation reserve okay so all the exchange gain on losses whether it is due to goodwill whether it is due to translation of net asset or profit are in that translation reserve in your statement of financial position coming to disposal all this that we have discussed till now is from the point of accusation now what if we dispose disposal everything is same the difference is now is the opposite what is the opposite you now okay disposal one thing you need to remember is whatever the exchange gain or loss we have recognized it earlier when we acquired it which is there in other components of income now it will move on to profit and loss it will be classified reclassify to profit and loss okay because your profits are now becoming realized before it was unrealized profit now it is realized profit so is 21 says the group's share the group's share of this exchange differences are reclassified to profit and loss on disposal before disposal it was it's always in other components of income the day you dispose everything goes to that means the group's share only goes to other sorry profit and loss this is the old thing you need to remember for disposal in your exam either you might get accusation either you might get disposal you have to know how to account for it we are over with this standard is 21 now we'll be doing questions before i summarize is 21 test your understanding one so this is the first question in this lecture parent and overseas what are you supposed to do in this question is we'll go to the requirement you have been given the statement of financial position and the exchange dates so in your requirement discuss how the goodwill arising on the accusation should be dealt in the consolidation for the year end of 31st december 2007 so this is only relating to goodwill okay so but let us read the important facts before we can calculate the goodwill even if it says discuss how goodwill you need to calculate and explain both just calculation is not enough so we are going to do both so let us calculate goodwill first before that see the good thing about uh group accounting questions are is that they always are asked in a similar way like you can just predict by reading the first line that what it will be you'll be given information about net assets at what amount you bought then at what percentage did you get the subsidiary what is the retail earnings any fair value of net asset and whether there is any impairment for goodwill or not this are some basic information that any question will have group accounting question i mean the first question in your sbr okay with this you might have some additional information as well 
for example if you have to translate you will be given the exchange rate if it's a domestic overseas you will not be given the exchange rates but in this question because it is is 21 is tested yes okay so here parent is owning 80 percent that means 20 percent is the nci non-controlling interest okay and shielding is is the functional currency the functional currency of the subsidiary subsidiary here is the overseas okay parent is the parent and overseas is the subsidiary okay now when it was acquired it was acquired on 1st of jan 2007 at that time their retail earning was 6000 shillings we still haven't moved on to the group accounting question like that comes in your ifrs 10 and ifrs 3 yet right that is business combination and subsidiary all those things we have not come to group accounting questions or those standards yet but through your financial reporting we all know how consolidations are done right we have a knowledge of it so with that understanding we are going to proceed okay reporting date is 31st december 2001 7 sorry at accusation day the fair value of net asset is given that is sorry the fair value of the net asset equal to the carrying amount with the exception of freehold land so whatever in the statement of financial position the carrying amount of the net asset is the same that is the fair value but there is one exception what is it freehold land this land this uh, the sorry the fair value of this land exceeded is carrying amount by 4000 shilling that is the fair value the increment it has been revalued by 4000 okay this is an exception that means this amount has not been accounted for in your financial statement you have to be careful of this 4000 at the date of the accusation the non controlling interest this is at fair value why how do i know it's a full goodwill method or not because already they have given you the fair value of ncr that is 5000 shillings goodwill is not impaired that's good that means you don't have to calculate impairment now you have been given the statement of financial position okay investment assets equity retail earnings liabilities exchange rate the first and the second and the average okay so from your financial reporting you should be able to calculate goodwill okay and not only that we still have group accounting questions to do where we'll be calculating goodwill okay but the method for calculating goodwill is in which currency do we have to calculate goodwill first in the functional currency of the subsidiary that is shillings in this currency it has been given already in that currency first don't convert first find the goodwill and then convert using exchange rate okay so the method for finding the goodwill is you start with consideration amount that you have bought the subsidiary at this is the formula we'll be doing this lots and lots of the of this when we do group accounting questions okay so see when they told you have bought it at what know where it has been given at what amount you bought then you need to look at the statement of the financial position of the parent you see investment in overseas at cost it is at this amount be aware they told you have to first write it in the functional currency of overseas that is shillings but it has been given to you in dollar so now convert it convert the dollar back to shilling because at the end we'll be converting that goodwill to into dollar okay it's not the other way around we are not going to calculate start with dollar you might be asking at the end we have to convert to dollar why not take this amount why taking the travel of converting back to shilling then again to dollar why because it's a rule i is 21 strictly told you you have to first calculate that goodwill in shillings in the functional currency of subsidiary before you convert it into presentation currency of the group that is dollar in this case so first it has to be converted back to shilling how do you convert it back to shilling take the closing price because this is at 31st december 2007 you have to take this date this date's rate so sorry uh, i'm sorry again investment in overseas at cost 
this accusation you have done it on first of uh, december sorry first of jan opening so you have to take 5.5 .5, the opening balance you multiply or you divide this is in dollar 3818 and this 5.5 .5 is in shillings you see it's in two different currency so you multiply okay so here consideration you have to get it in shillings i'm writing the currency here so to get it 3818 into 5.5 .5, which will be in terms of shilling it will be 20 20 and triple nine you add fair value of nci this is non-controlling interest already it has been given to you in shillings don't take the trouble of converting it's 5000 Then you'll be getting 25,999. Deduct the fair value of net asset. I'm writing short form fair value FV and net asset NA. Here, when you're taking net asset, you need to break it down. Net asset is made up of, because they didn't tell you one value of net asset. You have to look from the statement of financial position and get the breakdown. Understanding? So go to your statement of financial position because they told fair value is equal to carrying amount. So what goes in your net asset? Your equity capital will go, your retail earnings will go, that's it. And fair value adjustment if there is any. And we have. So these three things. Okay. Share capital, retail earnings. And fair value adjustment there was an increment in land right so share capital and retail earning as it is you are going to take from the statement of financial position which is 10,000 you have to take overseas shillings retail earnings when you are taking retail earnings you cannot take the statement of financial position retail earnings remember you have to take at accusation okay Equity capital, no problem. It, it is always 10,000. Whatever is given in the statement of financial position. But when you are taking return earnings, you have to see at accusation date, return earning was 6,000. This 6,000 you have to take. Okay. Because this NCI is at accusation. This is also at accusation date. So here, it is 10,000, 6,000. Not the statement of financial position is return earnings, but the one which is given to you fair value adjustment regarding land 4000 so this 4000 we are adding here it's an increment together 10 plus 6 16 plus 4 20000 deduct 20000 from 25999 and you are left with just 5 triple 9 which is your which is your goodwill this is goodwill at accusation this is in shillings. You have to convert it into dollar using what rate? Okay. This will be treated as a foreign foreign uh, operations asset. This is goodwill. Okay. So you have to write this in sentences. Okay. That this goodwill will be treated as a foreign operations asset according to I-21 and blah, blah, all those things. You can write it on your own. Answers are there. Okay, my part is only explanation to make the concept clear for you. Now you have to translate this goodwill using the closing rate of exchange. So at the reporting date, okay, goodwill will be 5999 divided by stated shillings. Okay, at the closing date, the rate is 5. Oh wait. Yes, at the close. Sorry, this is the average rate. It was it's five, and this time it's divide division because both are shillings. You are converting this to dollar. So divide this by five, and in terms of dollar, it will be one thousand two hundred. Now, whether there is an exchange gain or loss, you still have to work out on that. Still not over yet. 
okay remember that pro forma which i told you yes shillings rate and dollar goodwill at accusation was 5999 the rate is 5.5 see this is the opening rate 5.5 okay this one opening goodwill at opening this fine exchange gain or loss by the way this is the isn't it so divide it and you will be getting 1091 there is no impairment okay exchange because the question already told there is no impairment exchange gain or loss we don't know just keep a space okay and then write closing goodwill we already found what is the closing goodwill this will be same the rate here it will be 5 and 1200 so you see there's a difference Closing goodwill increased from 1091 to 1200. So, therefore, it's an exchange gain. You can see it's a balancing figure. There is no rate, it's a balancing figure of 109. Okay. Not yet over. This is a group accounting question. So, you need to allocate this among the group and the NCI. How much? They purchase 80%. So 80% will go to group, 20% will go to NCI of this. Uh, this is recorded in OCI, other comprehensive income. This is what you need to write in your sentence. Okay. Remember, which NCI goodwill method did you use? Full goodwill method. How did I know that? Because NCI's fair value is given. So you have to apportion it. So for group and NCI. 80% 20% of not the goodwill of the gain the gain has to be apportioned so this will be 87 and this will be 22 okay that's it for test understanding one any question you get ever like this similar way you have to do come into test understanding two this is a lengthy one so you have to bear a little patience with me okay mm. because this is just not one part of it this has lots of workings in it similar question as you can see here also you have been given the statement of financial position of the parent and the subsidiary but here you have been given seven more information the last one is the exchange rate first read the requirement prepare the equity section of the consolidated financial position and you should also explain why foreign exchange differences arise in the consolidated financial statements so let us read the other information sane purchased the shares in albums for 10,000 d on the first day of the accounting period at that day the retained earnings was d500 this is the retained earnings opening return earnings at accusation date you need this for net asset Okay. Then the fair value of net asset exited by the carrying amount of D1000. This is a fair value adjustment. Okay. This fair value adjustments were attributed to plant. That fair value of 1000 is plant which has a remaining 5 year life. Why did they give you this for depreciation? Okay. Second. Just before the year end, they acquired some goods from a third party. At who sent? Cost at 800. And he had sold it to Alburn. That means, can you see this is an intra group sale, intra group transaction. And intra group transactions on consolidation, you have to eliminate it. Because group is not gaining or losing anything. It's so an intra group sale. You have to eliminate it. Crossman eliminated. So he sold it to Alban for a cash at a markup of 50%. All, at the reporting, all these goods remain in the inventories of Alban. So there will be an unrealized profit also. Third, 1st of June, Alban lent 
sorry, send Len Alban 1,400. This is in dollar. Liabilities recorded at historic rate within non-current liabilities. There will be some mistakes. You have to correct it. Then he measures NCI at fair value. This is also a full goodwill method question because NCI is fair value is given. Otherwise, you have to calculate NCI by taking the proportionate percentage of net asset. And then and the NCI is D5000. Impairment review is done and goodwill reduced by 10% on at 30th June 2002. On 1st of July 2001, they received a government grant, SAND. 4000. This grant was provided as a contribution towards the cost of training employees over the next two years. You have to understand why grant is provided for what purpose. Okay, SAND has reduced the administrative expenses by the full 4000 and the full exchange rate. Okay. And in this, Saint acquired 60%. Saint is a parent. Functional currency is DS and presentation currency is dollar. Equity section. Okay. So let me tell you, they only asked for the equity section from the financial position, not the entire financial statement. Even then it has a lot of workings to do. So we'll start from here. You will be having the share capital. Equity capital. This is just an extract. You will be having sometimes a share premium, sometimes no. Depending on the question, you have to do the calculation. Let's keep a space for it. Then retail earnings, yes. You have to work on the retail earnings. See, this is a consolidated, okay? You first have to translate, then, cons then consolidate, join it with the parent and then write it here. Translation reserve because you'll be having gain or loss, exchange gain or loss. Okay, these things will be there no matter what. And NCI non-controlling interest will be there and then your total equity uh, equity and share there is no working return earnings will be having a working so we can label it as working one this will have a working and nci will have another working this is how you need to label even in your exam okay do this type of questions in excel excel is given for calculation only Remember, you have been told to discuss. Okay. But before my discussion part, while uh, see, while I'm explaining you how it is done, that is your explanation only. You can write it in sentences. That is not a big thing. I'm directly, I'm jumping to the calculation, the workings of retail earnings. Sometimes to do a working, in that also you need another working. Okay. So let's keep some space. Working one, retain earnings i'm using short form re okay and this next this will keep it in dollar first always start with the parents retain earnings very important through this you are learning consolidation also in case you forgot from your financial reporting you can never forget consolidation it's a question 100 percent you are going to get in your exam okay so saint is the parent go and check saint's retain earnings from statement of financial position that is four thousand dollar Okay. So here, wait, I'll keep some space. 4000. Now we are moving on to the group's share. Only the group share, not the NCI share. Okay. That means 60%. Group's share of on the post acquisition profit. After the acquisition, whatever the profit is, you have to take only the group's share out of it. Group acquisitions profit. For that, we need a working, separate working. So for that, we'll keep it as working for. And there has been an impairment. For that impairment also, in the retain earnings, you only have to take the group share, okay? See, basically, all the profit or all the expenses, you have to only take the group's share in the retain earnings calculation. This is always like this. 
remember it why we are taking impairment is an expense why are we taking profit profit and expense you have to take you have to deduct it so group share of you know that this question has a goodwill impairment because they told goodwill is reducing by 10 percent even this requires a working you need to first calculate goodwill you see directly they didn't ask you to calculate goodwill because they already asked equity section but do not be too overconfident because indirectly you have to calculate good if you do not calculate goodwill you cannot calculate impairment if you cannot calculate impairment you cannot calculate the correct return earnings if you don't calculate the correct return earnings your equity section will go wrong hence your final requirement that is equity section will go wrong you see how one thing is dependent on another that's why you need to be very very careful of each and every working every working is dependent on everything so here also this has another working will label as working five okay and then we have unrealized profit purp this will keep it as another working Okay, maybe working six and then garment grant because they told it reduce administrative expenses anything to do with expenses and income in the return earnings it will go that's why garment grant basically whatever the notes you have there each of them requires a separate working so working seven okay now i will leave the space and i will immediately go to my working two these are my main workings and this a small heading uh, let me let me highlight it for you this is a small indirect workings that you need little hidden workings okay these are my main for the equity section translation reserve do not get confused please know at where we are at the moment keep your pace you also need to work faster okay only two things will go groups share of net asset and profit groups share of goodwill okay this while you are calculating goodwill you will get it from your working five you see here from here you will get this is also in dollar groups share of net asset and profit for this another working working eight then we have nci working three we'll keep space i'm keeping space okay because we have to do a little little workings inside the working we have another working inside the main working like working one and two are the main workings inside them we have small little little ones like three four five six seven eight okay first let me write let me write down all the main workings and then i'll start calculating so in this way i am sure that i didn't miss out on anything you can proceed in any way you can start with the main and immediately jump to the small small workings and finish with working one and then proceed to working two like that also you can do you are free to do anything you want the only thing is check out your time you have to be on time that's it nci okay will be dollar so here it starts with fair value at accusation this is given nci percentage same like your return earnings now you just have to take the nci percentage of post accusation profit in your return earnings you took the groups percentage of post accusation profit then we have what this post accusation profit you had you had to rely on working for while you are doing the group from there only you will get for the nci also same working then nci percentage share of goodwill impairment not goodwill goodwill impairment because goodwill is an asset how can you take nci percentage but goodwill impairment is an expense so here this will be from working five then we have goodwill nci percentage 
on goodwill this is nci so you have to take nci percentage of goodwill now one is imp goodwill impairment the other one is just goodwill both you have to take and nci percentage on a net asset and profit both together you can take same even for group share you took groups percentage on net asset and profit but but not in the retail earnings you took the groups share net asset and profit in the translation reserve see here the place is different this will come from working six okay now working for what is working for you can follow this net assets okay Okay, so now we will be doing the tiny workings. Okay, net asset. Okay, so wherever you can figure out, we'll write it. Okay, for example, we started with the from here, we cannot do any of it from the return earnings because we need working number four, five, six, seven first. So we leave it and skip to working number two. Here also we can't do because we need we are dependent on working five and eight. NCI fair value at accusation. We can at least put that. Okay. So at accusation, the fair value was what? it was d5000 remember it's d you have to write it in dollar so it is at accusation okay so you have acquired on 1st of july 2001 this is the exchange rate this is d you are d so you divide 5000 by 2 to find it in dollar so here here 5000 divided by 2 it will be 2500 fair value of NCI rest all are dependent on other workings now we are moving on to working for net asset for net asset okay this is how you do at accusation three columns are there okay then this is the recording date Okay, reporting date, sorry, reporting date and post accusation. After accusation. Okay, this all will be in D first. D, D, D. Because you have been given everything in D. So rather than taking everything and combining individually one by one, equity capital also share premium also return earning also no first find everything in d and just convert that one figure one net asset to to dollar that is much easier and better so equity capital is 1000 you have to check of the d okay so net asset you need equity share premium retail earnings family adjustment depreciation we have a depreciation also in this case and exchange gain or loss we don't know because that also goes as a translation reserve in your equity that's why we are writing exchange gain or loss here exchange 
we'll keep it we don't know exchange gain or loss you can write it later so equity will be 1000 at accusation reporting date also 1000 sorry 1000 after accusation don't write anything okay then share premium share premium is given here already 500 so take that 500 and 500 same like equity capital share premium is also like that coming to retail earnings retail at accusation if you want to find out you have to read the information they told at accusation return earning is d500 and at accu and post accusation you have to see this okay wait first we'll write that 500 okay reporting for reporting you have to see here statement of financial position see the retail earning 12500 so the reporting date it is 12500 to know the post accusation that means it's just the increment how much return earnings increased from the date of accusation till the reporting date so it increased from 500 to 12500 that means it increased by 12000 so in the post accusation 12000 profit is recognized fair value adjustment the fair value that means carrying value increased by 1000 the 1000 this is the fair value adjustment so this 1000 you will write 1000 reporting date also 1000 okay then depreciation comes this thousand needs to be divided by five because five years so it is 200 so depreciation at acquisition date there is no depreciation okay but at the reporting date you have to deduct this 200 and hence you have to deduct 200 from post acquisition also basically post acquisition is the difference between at acquisition and reporting date if there's any difference you will have a gain or a loss otherwise it's same then what else to find the exchange gain or loss on the loan see there has been a loan that has been received by Albert given by Saint okay parent has given it to the subsidiary understanding so the loan wait, we have to read it again they have lent $1,400 on 1st of June 2002 and this has been under non-current liabilities so you need to take it out from there okay at that date the rate was 3.9 this is in D that is in uh, dollar different currency multiply so multiply by 3.9 so the loan loan will be initially recorded this is a part of an answer by the way okay recorded at 1400 into 3.9 because you want to find in d why if you don't find this in d how are you going to write it in d here this this net asset everything is in d so that's why you need to convert the dollar into d first so it is D5460. Okay. Now, what else? The loan needs to be retranslated. Loan is a monetary item or non monetary item? monetary item so you need to retranslate it or not yes using what closing rate closing rate is uh, four four is the closing rate so retranslate that loan by multiplying by four that is closing loan amount okay thousand four hundred into four which is d 5600 you see the value of the loan increased from 5460 to 5600 therefore it's a loss so find the difference basically is the difference 
5600 minus 5460 is okay what is the difference 140 it's a loss so this 140 is you are writing here at accusation there is no exchange loss but reporting date you'll be having 140 and here also you need to deduct 140 after post accusation okay so now total everything use excel for this okay in your exam this if you add up all our 3000 this will be 14 660 and this will be 11 660 because it increased by 11 660 from 3000 okay if you have to debit this if you have sorry if you have to do the journal entry for this loss it will be debit return earnings or profit and loss 140 credit credit what non-current liabilities it was there in non-current liabilities 140 okay so now we got the post accusation profit so since we got the post accusation profit that is this i will highlight it for you 1160 11660 on this can we go to working number 1 and get it done the group's share of the post accusation profit so it will be see this is in dollar profit is in d you need to convert it into into dollar from d to dollar what is the rate profit average rate profit needs to be converted using average rate average rate is 3 so you need to divide the profit d by 3 to get it in dollar and then take 60 percent of it because you have purchased 60 percent go up go to working number one here when you are taking it is 60 percent into 11660 divide by 3 because it's d 11660 and you are using the average rate so then it will be 2 3 3 did you get it now somewhere else also we have to adjust this where in your non controlling interest you have to take the NCI percentage of post accusation profit go to NCI here here okay in this one you have to take same 11660 divided by 3 but here you are taking 40 percent which will equal to 1555 five, five. Got it. Now let us move on to the goodwill part. Okay. Just oh, wait a minute. net asset and okay so here we need to move on to working number five which is goodwill here goodwill is Find in terms of D, D is the functional currency before finding it in dollar. Cost to the parent, that is your consideration. Okay, how much? They already told you, you have purchased it for 10,000 D. Sorry, uh, wait. Yeah, they told you that you have purchased it for 10,000 D. Yes, correct. It's already in D, so you just write 10,000.
you see when i'm getting confused right now okay then you add like the previous one test understanding to fair value of nci you add and say already they have given you d5000 deduct fair value of net asset fair value of net asset now you know from working number four what is it this is your net asset at accusation 3000 okay so it will be what goodwill will be 12000 next comes your impairment impairment is by 10 percent so 10 percent of 12,000 is 1200 deduct by it which will be 10,800 this is your goodwill at reporting date or you can say closing goodwill okay next this is not enough we have to move on to the exchange part of it the exchange gain or loss on goodwill the minute you find goodwill and impairment find the exchange difference on retranslation of goodwill remember that pro forma which i just showed you we did for we did in the previous question also so d the rate the dollar so at accusation the goodwill was 12,000 the rate at that date is 2 so it is 6,000 you divide it you will get this opening figure okay impairment is 1,200 average rate is 3 and it is 400 because you divide and exchange gain or loss we don't know i'll keep a space closing goodwill will be 10,800 closing date is 4 and if you take it will be 2,700 but if you take 6,000 minus 400 it is some 5,600 so 5,600 reduced to 2,700 it's a exchange loss the difference is it's a balancing figure of 2,900 now this 2,900 needs to be divided between 40% NCI and 60% group this is a full goodwill method so you have to apportion like this okay and also the impairment you have to apportion it like this so 60 percent and 40 percent 60 percent of 400 is 240 this is 160 the nci impairment okay And this, if you take 60% of 2900, 1740 and 40% 40 is 1160. Add up this two and see are you getting 2900 or not? Okay. So, this also immediately you can go and put it in the correct place. Okay. So, we can move on to return earnings number one okay start from working one again so here group share of goodwill impairment which is 240 just now we got okay and where else this 240 will go We'll keep it and what about uh, this one the group's share of the exchange loss on uh, goodwill right that will go in the translation reserve so go to the translation group share of the goodwill it's a loss so 1740 net asset and profit we haven't done yet and nci for nci only the nci percentage of goodwill impairment 
which is 160 and NZA percentage of goodwill which is 1160 okay now we will be moving on to working number 6 exchange difference on net assets and profit on net assets and profit i'm using short forms okay here also same d rate dollar so accusation of net asset then profit then exchange then closing net asset so opening net asset you it is 3000 where did you get this 3000 from you already got it from your working number 4 this 3000 okay and profit will be 11660 so 11660 is profit total will be 14660 you see at the reporting dates net asset whatever you get in the second column the middle column is the closing net asset only but the opening rate is 2 profit will be converted using average rate which is 3 hence it is 1500 3 8 8 7 and this if you convert using the closing rate which is 4 this will be 3 6 6 5 and the balancing figure is 1722. It's a loss. Why? Because your closing net asset went down. If you add your profit with your opening net asset, it is higher than your closing net asset. Net asset went down. That's why it's an exchange loss. This also you have to take 60 and 40 percent. 60 percent for group, 40 percent for NCI. So 60 percent if you take, it will be 10 three three and six eighty nine so this okay this you have to take and write it in the appropriate places we are going to go to the retain earnings now okay so uh, translation reserve sorry Return earnings only the last two workings. Okay. Translation. Trans yes, here working. This one is 1033. This is the group's share of net asset and profit. The 60% that we have taken. So you add, it's a loss. The total loss is 2773. Okay. NCI. Now we are moving on to the NCR. Okay. NCS percentage on net asset in this one. 689. So I think everything is taken here. So net asset is two, uh, 2046. This is the total NCI. Return earnings we still have to wait. Translation reserve is done. Net asset is done. Goodwill is done. So only retain earning is left. Everything else is finished off, completed. But for net asset, sorry, for good, uh, this is retain earnings. Two more things is there. One is garment grant. The other one is unrealized profit. So we'll go to those and start working. Some of these working numbers are changed, I think. It's okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. Wait, we'll go to retain earnings and see the working number. It is 6 and 7. I have changed it. I think. Now working 6 became. I think. Um, exchange on. Okay. Doesn't matter. So this will keep as. Unrealized profit. Okay. So we will start working on this. This. You can do it separately. You do not need the help of any other. Workings. Now. 
there is an intra group sale first find the profit on the intra group sale working number doesn't matter you can do accordingly okay i have just changed what is it need to go which point talks about this point number 2 okay they have made a markup of 50% it's 50% of what at the cost so at this cost 800 they have added 50% so first find the profit so 50% of 800 the profit section is 400 this is the intra group sale all of these items remain in the group inventory therefore the adjustment required is what your debit cost of sales and your credit inventory four hundred four hundred this comes into working one you have to deduct it from your what eliminate it from your retail earnings okay so we'll go to working one and we'll minus this 400 from there. It's an unrealized profit you have to deduct it it's not actual profit so you cannot add it with the profit now only one section is left that is the government grant okay that point they received a government grant for 2000 okay they have reduced this from this one okay now remember this is over two years it's 4000 full expense is 4000 but for one year it's only 2000 okay and understand this is a revenue grant because it is helping you in order to reduce your revenue cost not your capital cost revenue cost training employee okay so that's why it's a revenue grant and this should be recognized because it's a revenue grant yesterday we have been talking about government grant remember is 20 yes so is 20 is government grant so there there are two types of grant revenue grant and capital grant this is a revenue grant that is income grant so this you need to recognize in profit and loss on a systematic basis that means over the two years okay so that means satan should increase his expenses by 2000 and they and they have to record the balance as deferred income on the statement of financial position if you go you have to use the rule of is 20 here what did they told they reduced it by 4000 so you have to increase it by 2000 more because only up to 2000 you can reduce but they reduced more so you have to reduce that impact that's why you have to now increase it by further 2000 understanding so earlier they have reduced admin expenses by 4000 to increase admin expenses you have to debit 2000 and credit current liability it's a revenue grant you credit in the current liability because it will be shown as a deferred income in the statement of financial position therefore current liability within 12 months i told you the rule okay you can write it but here debit admin credit current liability 2000 So when you go to your working one, which is retail earning, you reduce your garment grant by 2000. Bit admin by 2000, that means more expense of 2000. Earlier you showed less expense. Now you have to increase that expense by further 2000. you showed 4000 as an income you have to reduce it by 2000 so that's why you are deducting here from revenue return earnings 
understand this it's not the uh, some of you might be thinking we have already reduced 4000 why again we are reducing 2000 no 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 it helped you to reduce from admin cost of 4000 means it's an income they are showing it as an income okay so from that income reduce 2000 then it will be 2000 expense exactly what you want you are correcting the error okay so now add all this it will be 3692 translation reserve is done nci is done net as and everything else is done now we can quickly go to our this and fill the table what is it equity see equity will be this okay of the parent always even the share premium share premium and equity is always the parents even under consolidation you do not join it with the subsidiary that's the rule in case you forgot i'm reminding you okay so this is in dollar 10000 3000 retail earnings we have done 3692 translation reserve it's a loss 2773 nci is 2046 add it will be 15965 this is the total equity so this is your calculation but they have also asked you the explanation so you need to explain okay what you have done that you first translated goodwill at the opening then the impairment at the average and then closing at closing therefore you'll be having exchange difference you have to explain three things see your requirement also told you why the foreign exchange difference arise due to three reasons number one goodwill so you need to talk about goodwill number two net asset you need to talk about that and profit these are the three reasons so goodwill i already explained net asset also is the same thing opening net asset you can uh, convert using opening asset opening rate then you add profit with it which is uh, at average and then closing net asset is at closing rate right that's what okay so these are the reasons now we'll be moving on to the next question that is test your understanding three which is parrot Test your understanding three. In this question, you are supposed to discuss the accounting treatment of Anaconda in the consolidated financial statements for the year and 31st December 2001. Okay. Parrot purchased 30% on 1st of Jan 400 million dinner. The profit was 20 million dinner. Other comprehensive income was 5 million dinner. Rate has been given okay now you need to discuss okay so here you need to find the exchange gain or loss right but please understand this question is different from your test your understanding one and two here the purchase is 30 percent this 30 percent falls between 20 to 50 percent so when something falls between 20 to 50 percent it is no longer a subsidiary then what is it called What is it called? It's an associate. Okay. The term is associate. So it is an associate. That means you have purchased an associate. So now you have to use the rule of IS 28, which accounts for associate no longer subsidiary rule okay so before the explanation part i always tell you do the calculation first okay here even though it's an associate you still can use the pro forma that you have been doing for goodwill profit net asset okay so here 
it is in dinar okay it is in dinars million then the rate and then in dollar million now you have purchased an associate so you first write the amount at which you have bought it so you have bought it for um uh, 20 million uh, sorry that's the profit you have bought it for 100 million dinar okay at which date at first of jan when the exchange rate was four okay so here is 100 rate is 4 100 divided by 4 is 25 next share of profit you have to add the share of profit see in is 28 okay after you after the purchase of associate you add the share of their profit okay so share of profit that is 30 percent what was the profit 30 percent of they have already given you 20 million right 20 million they are so 30 percent of 20 million is six so six million and the share of profit it's a profit so you have to use average okay which is 3.6 so 3.6 so 6 divided by 3.6 is 0 0.4 okay now you also have OCI you also have a share of OCI it's just non profit whenever OCI is given you have to take a share of that also okay 30% of your 30% of your OCI okay your OCI is given as 5 million 5 30% of 5 is 1.5 okay and the rate is the same average rate 3.6 so 1.5 divided by 3.6 will be 0 0.4 okay sorry this is 1.7 I'm sorry now whether it's an exchange gain or loss we don't know so we'll leave one space there because it's a balancing figure and then the closing associate okay so for closing associate what you need to do is just add all the figure 100 plus 6 plus 1.5 107.5 the closing rate is 3 you can get it from the list and then it will be 35.8 and if you add up this 25 plus 1.7 plus 0 0.4 it would be something less than 35.8 right so because it is less and you see at the year end the associates value increased so it's an exchange gain so the difference is 8.7 this is just the calculation part now comes your discussion part okay so you have to say that this is a 30% investment means they have to be accounted using what? Equity method. This is what you have to write in your answer. Because IS28 says associates are accounted using equity method. Second, you have to initially recognize associate at cost 100. We have done it. And then add the profit. Okay. The share of profit and share of OCI that we have taken and then at the reporting date they'll be translated using the closing rate all these things you have to write in different paragraphs for this we have one paragraph for this second paragraph third paragraph fourth paragraph and fifth paragraph okay and where will this exchange gain of 8.7 will go where will this go in your statement of finance uh, statement of profit and loss it will go under OCI other comprehensive income and in your statement of financial position it will go under translation reserve in your equity section you will get it that's it that's it so in your exam SBR exam you can get the hardest question like we have seen in test understanding 2 which was one of the longest question or you will get something easier like this okay we still can't say 
but what you need to do is you should know all the types of question from a full fledged to semi uh, type of questions where the calculations are not so much to purely discussion okay you have to know all the three ways of answering the questions on is 21 now let us go to the last question that is test understanding four Test your understanding for here this is a disposal question and this is the only disposal question so discuss how the disposal should be accounted in the consolidated financial statement okay he has sold its entire hundred percent okay for fifty thousand net asset at that date was twenty and goodwill was ten thousand humility balance of the foreign group foreign currency reverse is a gain of five thousand okay this is one of the easiest question you can expect so first let us do the calculation before we move on to the explanation part while i'm calculating you'll be able to explain okay so first here you need to uh, start with the proceed see whenever disposal comes this is for the disposal okay you start with the proceed it was for 50,000. There is no exchange, uh, anything, okay? No uh, currency and all. Currency rates are not given. This is just to understand that when disposal occur, the gain is reclassified from OCI to profit and loss. Only to show that part. That's it. And when you dispose, remember what happens to your net asset and goodwill? You have to de recognize them. Okay, so in your explanation, you have to write all this, okay? Net asset, goodwill, de recognized on disposal. Why? Reason is they have lost the control. See, you have to see whether control is lost or not. If control is lost, you de recognize. They have lost the entire 100% they have disposed. So, from a subsidiary, they are no longer a subsidiary. Now, they have lost the control. If they have lost the control, you have to, you have to find a gain or a loss. Okay, so net asset. Net assets before the disposal. This is not after disposal. That means till the date of the disposal, what is the value of the net asset? Okay, so here. Okay, sorry. Let me erase it. Okay. Yeah. Net asset. So net asset is uh, 20,000. We'll write it in inside column. And goodwill. We might have NCI also. If this was not sold entirely 100%. But because it is 100% you have sold, you will not have any NCI. It will be zero. Okay. Otherwise NCI is also there. For partial, good, uh, for, for partial disposal. This is fully they have disposed. So 30,000 you will be deducting from 50,000 you are left with 20,000 okay and from this 20,000 what do you have to do reclassification reclassification of gain to PNL you have to add it you have to add that 5,000 with this and then it adds up to 25,000 because this is the gain and with that you add the 5,000 that has been reclassified from OCI to PN so it becomes 25,000 okay so all this you have to write the keywords are this okay number one loss control you have to write this in your answer okay second net assets and goodwill i'm giving you the answers in points you write it in sentences or you can check the answer d recognized net assets and goodwill d recognized then what else this is for any disposal okay and third so three things will happen oci gain or loss 
now that means when they are disposed reclassified to pnl these are the three things so that's it now we'll summarize is21 so the summary of is21 is we first went through functional currency saying that it is the currency where the primary economic environment currency of the primary economic environment where entity operates okay we went through primary factor and if through primary factor we couldn't come to a conclusion we went to the secondary factor okay and if for subsidiary if they are choosing a different functional currency from the parent or they are choosing the same functional currency as the parent we have to see some other factor okay if those factors are not satisfied they have to use a different functional currency they have to use the different functional currency from the parent if they have to use a different functional currency the subsidiary have to use a different functional currency from the parent then they have to go back to primary and secondary factor again next presentation currency the currency in which your financial statements you choose to present right then we went through individual transactions how you account for it at transaction date on the settlement date and at reporting date there were two i two sets of items monetary non monetary monetary you retranslate at the closing date non monetary like inventory land you do not retranslate but if there is a fair value then you have to do that okay for the, only for the fair value part we went through all the questions okay for each of this we went through questions for functional currency we did a question how to determine then on transaction date how we have to account on settlement date how we have to account on reporting date how we have to account we went through questions of each of this now coming to the group okay how do you translate the subsidiary's financial statement assets and liabilities closing rate income expense oci average rate that means any pnl item was average rate any balance sheet item closing rate calculating goodwill if it's a subsidiary there will a goodwill come uh, sorry a goodwill will come so you need to first calculate the goodwill in the subsidiary's currency then you have to translate at the closing rate because opening goodwill is at opening rate closing goodwill is at closing rate and if you are having an impairment of goodwill that is at average rate so due to this there will be a difference and that difference is known as exchange difference how do you calculate this goodwill opening net assets and profit exchange differences comes from three areas goodwill opening net asset and profit opening net asset and profit we calculate together okay and all the exchange differences goes under other comprehensive income and for disposal just recycle the profit and loss sorry the exchange gain and loss from oci to profit and loss that's it so that's it for is21 make sure that you do lots of questions from revision kid on is21 you will get it in question number 1 mostly that is for 30 marks question in your sbr so i will see you in the next lecture that is is23 that's a small one that is boring cost so till then take care